Borough Castle Almanac is an archaeology, creativity and well-being programme based at Borough Castle's Roman Fort and the Time and Tide Museum in Great Yarmouth. Working with Norfolk Archaeological Trust and local mental health services, the principal aim of the programme is to create a safe, interesting and adventurous platform for shared experiences and creative learning all in a fun way. Borough Castle is a magical site set in the hearts of the Broads National Park with stunning views of Braden Water and the wider landscape. The fort dates back to the 3rd century and was part of a Roman network of coastal defences. It remains one of the most impressive Roman monuments in Great Britain. Coming together on a fortnightly basis, we are often joined by artists, archaeologists, naturalists, musicians and other like-minded individuals. They share their stories, their knowledge and enrich the members' experience of the site. So the Restoration Trust is a charity and we run projects which we call culture therapy, usually involving connecting people with heritage and um, creativity. So it's always with adults who've got mental health issues in their lives. We run projects in historic landscapes and to do with archaeology. We just thought, wow, this is a fantastic opportunity to use this incredible place which belongs to the people who live here, you know, because it's got this combination of being in nature, of this wonderful archaeological history, and it's also really deeply rooted part of the culture of this area. And it's going to be here forever, so that once people have started to come here, then they're going to be able to keep on coming and bringing their families and their friends and making use of it. We provide whatever means it necessary to get someone here. We get them here for free. Actually, that's one of the main barriers to, to people coming. And the other thing is the barrier of fear. And we try and overcome that by having a partnership with an organisation that supports people already. So in this case, we've worked really well with Access Community Trust. People have a relationship with Access. And as a result, they feel a trust to do something that they haven't done before. And so that's a really crucial part of how we structure the project, is to have that community partner. The project coordinator is Todd James, who was able to continue working on the project when he joined Access Community Trust. Todd has been central to the success of the project. People trust him, and because of that, they come along every two weeks. Todd participates, encourages, and crucially is full of enthusiasm, helping to create a safe and relaxed environment. The group understands something that society doesn't understand and that is that every single person in this country on earth needs help with their mental health. I think what people lack when they're dealing with mental health problems is stability sometimes. So a lot of the things around them are transient. So mental health services and the people who work in them are incredibly transient. Your support worker, your care coordinator will change frequently or they might not be available to you just through time pressure or anything else. But I think what you know is everyone's gonna be there. Now it doesn't mean the same group of people are gonna turn up every week because sometimes people can't make it. But you know there's gonna be 10, 15, 20 people there. Myself and Laura, at least one, probably both of us every single time are pretty much there. But you know you're going to go to something consistent. The environment's going to be the same, the people are going to be familiar, new people are going to be people that you can trust. And so actually, people feel like they can uh, be safe and, and come back, um, as well as just that consistency of, of who's there, is just the fact that there is so much time and space. So although we only need to give it for three hours, actually we've got the online environment, You've got any time you want yourself to look at Borough Castle and create things, but one thing we've got there is a lot of space. So people are able to sort of take themselves off, they're able to spend time. And people have grown in confidence in their role in the group. So some people's role in the group, without even knowing it and talking, is actually to be more vocal. It's to say, there's a problem here. We've got Louise, who's actually campaigned, a one woman campaign to get more bins to stop the area looking a mess. Well, we need someone in a group. You need someone who's an advocate who's going to speak up. But you also need someone who's perhaps more quiet about it and, and sort of says, yeah, I really feel really strongly about this as well. And yeah, I'll help you to 
put it online or will help me to speak to the right person or Laura just says you come over here and talk to this important person from the Broads Authority and tell them direct. Walking around the fort's ruins, the group usually takes the same route, taking fixed point photographs. These document the changing landscape and the impact the seasons have on the surrounding countryside. This is an opportunity for relaxed conversations, discussions, debates, or for some, the chance to take themselves away on their own and enjoy the peace and serenity of the area. At the end of the walk, we head back to Borough Castle Village Hall for the lunch and to summarise the experiences that we've had. The experts who come to the group communicate their enthusiasm in a very direct and inclusive way. This provides a personal connection with people who are passionate and deeply knowledgeable about their subject and it's a great way to learn. To look at the wildflowers with Sam from the Norfolk Wildlife Trust. I mean, that's quite something. It feels really special. Or to look at stone, at the geology with Tim Holt Wilson um, doing his stories in stone. I mean, that was incredible. That was mind expanding. You know, that is fantastic. To meet a, a writer like Rebecca Stott, you know, to come and talk about a book that she's still writing and to walk with us in the evening. I mean, it made your hairs on the back of your neck stand up. You know, it's, it's, it's quite exciting that. It's not just that it was the moonwalk that was magical, it's also just the people again, they just make you feel like that. And they make you feel, and because they care about how you feel, and we all care about each other and everything, it just makes you feel really good. Among the highlights of the visits to the group, musician Anna Mudika brought her insatiable passion for music and the dance of her country, Zimbabwe. Occasionally, visits to other sites are organised, enabling shared experiences outside of Borough Castle. These have included a behind-the-scenes tour of the British Museum, as well as mudlarking on the banks of the Thames. Closer to home, we have had special times at Buckingham Fen and Norwich Castle Museum, amongst other places. My name's Mark Cocker, I'm an author and naturalist, and we spent the evening coming to see the rooks at Buckenham, which is um, one of the spectacles of winter in Norfolk. Uh, we've probably seen about 20,000 birds, and they come from an area of about 400 square kilometres, from about as far away, a maximum distance of about 16 miles. And, and at its best, it's a sort of tornado, slowly revolving tornado of birds swirling around and then their voices all meld into this lovely 
is, well, it sounds to me like like a like a sea on an ocean on on the floor of a, a pebbly beach, and you get that roar of their sounds, and it's a, it's a wonderful spectacle. The group has provided a solid platform for the interests of its members to be explored and built upon. These include nature, history, making art, people can be curious, share their knowledge and express themselves in all parts of the creative process. Inspiration artists like Ian Brownlee have encouraged us to learn, to have fun and to play. My job is to create a space where something can happen. And in some ways, I put it back to my training uh, as a community musician and doing search and reflect that we're all participants in, in a, an experience. We've all got something to offer. And so it's about in that space, what do we bring to it? Sometimes it might need to be teased out. Sometimes it might need to be guided, but it is an absolute gift when someone says, you know, I think, I think it'd be good to do this. And we go with that. Creativity is central to being a human being. It's about solving problems. It's about understanding uh, yourself and what's around you. So it, anything that takes us into new territory that enables us to try out things, that enables us to express ourselves it's really valuable to us as individuals, but, but more than that, that um, we learn from each other when we're, when we're being creative. The Almanac, it's primarily a social gathering and it's a, a kind of supportive community of people who, who come together. So within that, it's easier to, to do things and say, well, let's just have a go at this. And, and also, I like to quote John Cage, right? Art socialized, it's a process set in motion by a group of people. It's not one person making a thing, okay? And I think that's, that, that's again, it's, it's central to my, my approach that we are a bunch of people, we're doing stuff and, and we're feeding off each other and what, what each of us have to offer. We're, we're learning from each other. And again, that's it's a very human thing. So what we've basically been doing today is playing with the idea of an almanac and creating these small documents that somehow carry some of the essence of what the experience has been for people and hopefully capturing some of the highlights in, in the process. So with the Elizabethan House Museum, which is quite a formal space, we were quite limited in what we could do within, within that place. Uh, and usually, uh, there's a kind of thing in galleries that maybe you can only draw using pencil on paper rather than using messy materials. And those constraints allow for, for things to happen. So although we wandered around, we experienced the place, we did some sketching, we, um, we, we had a bit of fun playing with ideas of how we draw, you know, those kind of things like drawing using a continuous line or only drawing with straight lines, all those kind of things, just messing about but capturing some of the things that were there. In many ways, uh, the, the Raveningham Sculpture Trail really epitomises what the group's creative approach is about and what, what I think is, is central to, to good participatory practice. And that the idea for what we would do at Raveningham came from within the group. And, and then we worked together to manifest it. And the thing about Raring was uh, with the making of the roundels, the inclusion of those physical things from Borough Castle in terms of the, the leaves and the grasses and, and the images as well, the photographic images we put in. These things created a, a kind of a, a structure that was an embodiment of the experience of us being there. I think a big thank you has to go to the outstanding textile artist, Sue Tyler, whose inspiration gave the momentum to make it happen.
there's a lot to learn from the people who do the walks and loads of people who come are uh, knowledgeable of what's going on around here and I would never know if I did it on my own so you're not judged for what you have or who you are as a person you can just come here and relax and talk be with further away from the roads so that you don't hear cars and you just hear water and there's something really peaceful about silence just sitting there and thinking to yourself for a while listening to no one talk just nature itself it just it's a different way to de-stress this one group has given me would take confidence in other groups and giving more things a go with the community. There have been so many new experiences that I would never ever have done. No one cares what you are. They take you for what you are, not what people think you are. So yeah, I yeah, I yeah, I really like it. It's it's very calming. I now tell people my problems and they don't judge you, they're there to help you and resolve to have a, like, a better life and you don't feel embarrassed, ashamed. So yeah, that's one reason why I love going to Barca, I love it. The best thing for me is kind of being outdoors because I have been a bit of a shut-in to be honest. but just being outside, seeing new things I didn't even know about is it's just great. Something that I needed to do for myself to be a happier person. I've had mental health problems for 19 years uh, and I, I started to become well again last year. It has been very life changing for me. Uh, it has helped boost my well-being, my confidence. Uh, you, you feel part of something and you grow together. You, you experience each other's ups and downs together in a friendly, safe, caring environment. And I, I just can't get over how, how well the groupies run and the experiences we all, we all get from it. And we support each other through, through the good times, through the bad times. You know, we're all connecting with each other on social media. These are people now who I will consider friends for life now. It's a fantastic experience. Great. Absolutely amazing. It's just beautiful. It's peaceful. You know, if you just want to come here and just chill and, and, and wind down, it calms your mind, you know. You could sit here for hours and, and just do nothing. Adrian Charlton, one of our members, has been visiting Borough Castle since the 1970s. His particular interest is based around the search for Roman archaeology. Adrian has found some truly remarkable coins. One which he uncovered in a molehill when we were at the fort in 2018 dates back to AD 348. It has the inscription, The Return of Happy Times, and that feels like a good way to describe Borough Castle Almanac. And I came in with my father and my brother and my sisters and I looked in the wood beyond there and I found a Roman coin with a couple of angels, Christian Alti, and then the emperor on the other side, you know, of the coin with a long Roman emperor nose. So I got hooked with the first coin and I kept going there after that. I used to come here with a little hip flask with some sher VP sherry in. I just come here when it's really cold, search the fields of pottery, coins, they look like washers, just like discs. And once I went there, found nine coins in one afternoon, you know. And you find the Roman pins, um, bone counters and dices, um, part of a bronze um, sandal. I found a pommel of a Roman um, sword handle, you know. When my eyes, I could go on top of the field, climb all the way up, and spot a coin halfway down the field and then walk halfway along the field to pick the bronze coin up. It's definitely the people that make the group. They're just so inviting and they just 
include you so much and they just make you feel welcome. There's just always activities to do and there's like, they always, they just make you feel right at home. A lot of people go through mental health issues so we all sort of like understand each other are coming from. I think it's really good that people open up about it now because it's more healthy as well. I've been a part of the Borough Castle pro project since it started. May 2018 I first came along and I've been a member ever since and I'm a part of furniture. I find that being down on this little walk, bridge walk and then the boardwalk, um, listening to the different sounds, I find it quite mindfulness. You hear the birds, sometimes there's different smells because of the different plants that are going that have flowered and plant flowers on the trees. I just find it just find it really relaxed and I feel like I can ground myself and just recharge myself here. Being part of the Barrel Castle project is that you're not judged and you're accepted for who you are. I never thought I would be involved in a project like this, but it's given me my connection back to the nature and my connection back to connecting with people again. The first thing about the lockdown is that it has prevented us from meeting together at the Borough Castle Village Hall and then walking to, to the site together. The, the lockdown obviously has been hard for everyone, um, but we, we've overcome uh, issues of not being able to meet physically by meeting online via Zoom calls. It's still been fun, it's been engaging. Uh, it's just been so good to, to watch the, the, the transition from not being able to meet physically to meeting online. The, the way in which uh, Laura has, has worked with the idea of us meeting virtually, it's, it's been strange but it's, it's become more comfortable. It's, it has been a way of connecting, you know, and that's, that's been really good. Um, more than that, to, to then think about how we be creative together, but remotely in that virtual space has been a real challenge and, and an opportunity as well. The really lovely thing is the way in which we've made together and it's involved physical resources. So, um, I, I would gather things together, think, oh, well, we could maybe do something with it, with this stuff. Give that to Laura. She sends it out to everyone, and her phrase is, it's a kind of proxy touch. And I think that is really, really lovely, as it's a way of, it's a physical connection, you know, it's, it's something tactile. As soon as we knew this was going to happen, we knew that we wouldn't be able to come to Borough Castle, but, but we knew that we were going to carry on meeting. And, um, and so we have, and we've carried on uh, all the way through. And actually, we've learnt a lot about how to meet like that. And um, I think that's, it, it's, it's not like it's a positive experience, but we have learnt something new as an organisation about how you can engage with people remotely. We are really thankful after a tough time during the pandemic that we are finally able to meet up at Borough Castle again. We meet up in a socially distant and responsible way to embrace our surroundings and enjoy a session with the wonderful Dr Dance. It's good to be back. It does feel a bit strange. Um, we haven't well, we haven't met up for four months now, so physical interaction today is um, has been quite welcome. I mean, I've, I've really been stuck in a sort of built-up area for sort of four months, so to come into an open space for the first time in that amount of time is um, from from being locked down is it's quite it's quite a nerve-wracking thing. I have been quite nervous about it, but. I think I'm relaxing more and more as we um, as we go on. I 
and actually be able to come and see everybody else and interact with them face to face rather than over computer screens. Yeah, really good. Especially being able to do the walk again. Yeah, it's amazing. I've been coming here since the trial, since before it even started, like the yeah, the trials of it all. And um, so it's like three years and doing this every two weeks for three years and then not being able to do it for like six or well, four or five months is it's been a massive change it was really hard to get used to at first but obviously now being back in everything it's, it's just i don't know it's like being back at home isn't it it's like you've gone away for a while like you know and then you've just come back and yeah it's like one big family so it's awesome Dancing is just a natural uplift anyway, but being able to incorporate with everybody and do it with everybody in nature and having a laugh and, you know, doing it fun is yeah, it's just really good, really uplifting. Like, really, my favourite session by far, definitely.